Hello YouTube. Uh, this video is about the DARPA Shredder Challenge. Uh, I competed in it and I think I got uh, 40, 41st. I got a last minute uh, six points, so there we go. Congratulations to everybody who uh, participated and especially congratulations to the people who won. Um, I would like to share with you what I call um, a decent attempt, although that might be a little too uh, arrogant, but whatever, we'll continue with that. Um, I wrote my program in C Sharp, and here we go. My approach was to write a application which would allow people to very quickly take the data that they gave us and rip all the chads out real fast and then put it into an environment in which you can use it. So here is my DARPA Shredder Child in Puzzle 1. And basically, uh, you add the project, you add all the sources, and then you come to the extractor and you make all the settings. The settings for the extractor are color masks. So basically, you define a set of colors that you don't like, and those are the background. So in this one, I said the magnitude, and this is basically a Pythagorean distance for a three space of RGB. And then you start clicking. Um, you start clicking around. So, oh, I got some Chad there, so I'll, I'll, I'll remove that. Uh, you start clicking around, and it adds it to the list every time there is a new color that you, you don't like. And then you save the parameters. Uh, these are all the Chad colors. I've pre-recorded those guys, right? And you save the colors, it checks for the overlap, and then you hit save parameters, and then you double click. When you double click, it goes through and it digs out the Chad. And as you can see in this first approximation, we have a lot of red, so we got to go in and fix that. Uh, let me go quickly and just go ahead and populate, and let's get that red that's right along that edge. And then hit OK, save parameters, and do it again. Now the second attempt will be better. It's a little more clean for the purposes of this. Uh, you can do that. Uh, I won't show you the sweep because it takes a little bit of time to run the, the dealy, but then it effectively takes the uh, chad colors and uses that to sweep across the entire page. And when it's done, it's ripped all of them out and stored them on disk. So we're going to save that. And I've already done that here. Here are all of the individual isolated chads. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Here you go. Here are all the individual isolated chads that we have. And we'll go ahead and launch the puzzle assembly view. And here is the puzzle assembly view. And there we go. And you can zoom out, you can zoom in, you can do all sorts of stuff. And that is what that one looks like. And this is an unassembled view of the puzzle. So I will close this one down and I will show you my puzzle two, which, um, let me just run runner again. Uh, I will open up puzzle two. And there are three files in this one. I've already extracted all the chads. I've actually solved this one, but it just looks ugly. And here you go. So it's loading up all the chads. There's a lot more chads in this one, so it's a little bit different. And I solved the puzzle off to the right, so there are left. And this is what the chad looks like uh, when they're done. Now, when they're in this, it's like your standard uh, uh, being able to move pieces around. So you can grab them, you can rotate them, you can spin them this way, you can spin them that way. Um, very good. You can zoom in really close to get the detail. See, here's a little bit of red that I didn't dip, uh, that I didn't extract, but it's because the red was the same as the text, and I like that. So let's say, for instance, you want to take these two pieces and you can join them together. You can just line them up, and you hit J, J, and then they're joined together and they go around. Uh, what I didn't get a chance to do, which I wanted to do, um, was um, this little mode here. Uh, wireframe. Wireframe takes the entire puzzle and lets the image go away and you only get to see the geometry of the piece and you can kind of see how the geometries line up. Now they're not accurate but there's an algorithm which generates that geometry so you can like change the, um, the depth. Let's get a complicated piece like this guy here. You can change the depth and it changes the degree in which it um, adds polygons and new polygons to the outline which is kind of neat. But again, I never, uh, I only had five days, so I didn't have a lot of comparison to, um, I didn't have a lot of time to go through the algorithm and compare all that kind of stuff. There's also a view where you can just see point views. Uh, that's not the right one. This is the Farseer engine, if you haven't seen it. And you can see all the individual vertexes which make up that polygon. So that's another way to look at it. And the blue lines are all of the, all the joints, so that it's actually one piece together. So that's about it. And one thing I will add to the end of this video is the really cool view of Puzzle 5, which has an astronomical amount of pieces. So let me open that puppy up, and then that should conclude everything. 
but I had loads of fun working on this one. Here's 20 pieces. This is what the, in this I had this function called the super sweep, which basically went through every single one of them. But I ended up having to do them one by one because the, because uh, it would crash my computer. That was awesome. You're not really, uh, you're not really having fun until you run out of memory. <laughs> that was nerdy. But uh, yeah, Puzzle 5 is one of the most impressive ones and daunting. You definitely would need some type of uh, algorithmic assignment, but I think with the geometry and the color matching that I was having, I, I, I would have gotten somewhere, though it is much easier to talk than it is to do. Dot, dot, dot. Waiting and waiting for the loading. Uh, the extraction of the chads for uh, Puzzle 5 took about an hour, so that's not so bad. Um, I did it single-threaded. I wanted to do it double-threaded or multi-threaded, but uh, I didn't. I, I wasn't very smart about how I engineered the program originally, and multi-threading was a luxury that I didn't have time to actually properly implement. But here we go. Here's the full view of uh, Puzzle Number Six or Puzzle Number Five, with all of the chads that are in, and it is incredible. By the way, that's the uh, that's a really cool box packing algorithm I found online. So anyway, that is it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the puzzle as much as I did. And I am excited to see if anybody else is so bold as to share their uh, attempt with, with the rest of YouTube. Thank you. Bye.